Hi and welcome to the detailed discussion and solution of physics that had been asked in JE Main 2019. Well, starting 2019, there was a major change in format. Till last year, papers were conducted in both offline and online mode, but starting this year, entire JE Main examination has been conducted in online mode by NTA the National Testing Agency. The examination is conducted in many days. Specifically, it had been conducted for four days in two shifts, one as morning and other as the evening. So here I'm going to discuss the paper that had been set on the 12th January, and this was the last day of the first phase of JE Main. And I'm here to discuss the paper that was asked in the morning shift. All right, now let's begin the journey of the discussion of the 30 questions that had been asked in this particular shift. Okay, the first one is something like this. You just see here, the question says, a person standing on an open ground hears the sound of a jet aeroplane coming from north at an angle of 60 degree, but he finds the aeroplane right vertically up his position. If V is the speed of sound, we need to calculate the speed of the aeroplane. The question is very, you know, fundamentally related. At a glance, it may seem that this has been derived from Doppler's effect, but it is not. You can simply solve it by a basic idea. But here, you require to understand one given thing, which is very, very much essential. And that is something like this. You see, the person is here, let's say. And the question says that the person hears the sound of a jet aeroplane coming from north at an angle of 60 degree with the ground. So if I say this point to be north, so here this angle is 60 degree. All right, so now what happens is that the person is there, the person hears that the sound is coming from this direction while the person finds that the aeroplane is there vertically up. So what has essentially happened, the sound which was released by the jet aeroplane at this point, when it reached the person, meanwhile the jet plane has exactly reached here. All right, so let me repeat it again. Initially the aeroplane was here, it produced a sound. By the time the sound reaches the person, the aeroplane exactly reaches here. So that's a basic concept. That's why the person hears the sound coming from this direction and finds the aeroplane vertically upward. All right, so if I say this as L, now just see, this is the distance which is L, so what we'll get is that L divided by V, that's the speed of sound in this direction, will be equals to L cos 60, that's L by 2, velocity of aeroplane, let me write it as VA. So this is very straightforward. Velocity of aeroplane is going to be V by 2. Therefore, for question number 1, third option is the correct option. Fine then, now it's time we move to the second question. Question number 2 is another straightforward question from RL Circuit. And this question, in fact, tests your knowledge of boundary condition the condition at t equals to zero, the condition at t equals to infinity. So let's see what is the question all about. And it's here in the figure shown, a circuit consists two identical registers. So this and this have resistance 5 ohm. This has 2 millihenry. There's an idle battery of potential difference 15 volt, and that is connected in this manner. The question says, what will be the current through the battery long after the switch is closed. I think things can't be much simpler than this. Long after the switch is closed, that means the circuit has reached the steady state. And in steady state, inductors behave as open circuit. So what really happens is that, and in steady state, inductors behave as short circuit, right? Now what really happens is that, this is short-circuited, so these two resistances will be in parallel. 
So they are 5 and 5 in parallel, that will be 2.5, and 15 divided by 2.5 will be 6 ampere. So option number 3 would be the correct option for question number 2. Let's now move to the third question. Question number 3, experimental physics. Of course, it has been brought from the topic current electricity, but related to galvanometer. It says the galvanometer deflection when K1 is closed and K2 is open is theta naught. So let me show where is K1 and K2. So K1 closed, K2 open, the galvanometer deflection is theta naught. And next time, K2 closed, K1 also closed, R2 made 5, the galvanometer deflection becomes theta naught by 5. Now, based on this data, we need to calculate the resistance of the galvanometer, and it says we need to neglect the internal resistance of the battery. So that has made the matter quite simpler. See, it's so fundamentally simpler that initially K2 is open and K1 is closed, so the whole current would go in this way. And how much would be the current? Let's say V is the potential difference of the battery divided by 220 plus R. R is the resistance of the galvanometer. That's the current and that is equal to K times theta naught. Because we know that current is directly proportional to theta, you can write in that given way. Because of the linear arrangement, linear design of the galvanometer, that's a very strong assumption. Without any failure, we can put. Now, when K2 is closed as well, and resistance is, of course, 5M, let's see first how much would be the current here. So first, let me find the current through the battery. So that's V divided by 220 plus 5R by 5 plus R is the current through the battery, and I need to calculate the current through the galvanometer, so into 5 by 5 plus R, and that is going to be equals to K theta naught divided by 5. That's a straightforward calculation. You do those things, there are two unknowns and two equations, you can easily, you know, calculate all those things, and if you just divide first by 2, you would get the value of resistance galvanometer to be 22 ohm. So 22 ohm here exists in option number one. So the correct option for question number three comes out to be option number one. Let's move to the next question now. 